All right. Yeah, 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 baby. Oh, God, I just got to make sure that clock starts turning. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. So, we're going. I'm, I'm Jared, by the way. I am Josh. Good to be here, brother. Sorry yeah. about the delay. Thank you man, for the invite, man. It's, you know, become clockwork where uh, I get my summertime cold. Ugh. Like, right, you know, first of June, like, right at the official season change. And it's not that I've was kind of iffy uh, as a kid. Which fall, winter, you know, it's pretty much guaranteed you'll be sick through those months. Spring, summer, spring is iffy, but summer I was usually in the clear. Not it, it I think it's part of my old age where it's, I'm pretty much a spring, summer uh, allergy sickness guy. Yeah, man. I was like, <laughs> why now? Yeah, mine are worse <laughs> than it too. My spring allergies have always just killed me, so. I'm sorry to hear that this has developed because Georgia is uh, quite the bastard when it comes oh, to the allergy season. So I'm very goodness. sorry to hear that, man. So I think I've at least got it under control enough where I can actually hear me talking. I won't have oh, to yeah. run and go hack too much stuff. Anyway, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I guess it's been a lot of happened since the last time we got together and talked. And one of the things right off the bat was, uh, what do you think of Solo? Uh, man, honestly, I really dug it. I thought it was very, very cool. Way, way don't understand all this hate that it's been getting on the dang old internet. Now, that being said, a lot of the complaints I have about it are going to be like, you sure you like this movie? Yes, I like this movie. I loved it. I just didn't like everything about it. I'm with you. I had a blast with it. I thought it was really cool, man. So and There's that's, that's some nitpicky stuff you can get into. I mean, about the first, I would like to say 15 minutes. It's probably closer to 20. I was sitting there in the theater like, man, this ain't Han Solo. And they're going through setting up all this relationship with this chick. And it's like, I just don't care. I don't care. Uh, once they get to to me, the Woody Harrelson character. Like, okay, the ending starts. That's very interesting. And then they, they go on their first little mission. All right, now somebody's pushing the gas. That's very interesting because that's pretty much the start. Uh, that's what I like, too. Because yeah. even the Chewbacca stuff, it's like, okay, this is how him and Chewie met. Okay. And then right. after that, all the all the Chewbacca stuff I love because I love yeah. that character. Yeah. But, yeah, man, once you get the Mal Reynolds character who pops in there and says, just what we talk, what do we talk about? We for mm -hmm. years have described Firefly as Han Solo pre-Star Wars. Yeah. It's pretty much exactly what you got. That's yeah. great. I loved it. Um, I was afraid that I was going to be, because I'm with you, whenever I'm watching it, it's like, it's not that I didn't like it. I just wasn't into it. Yeah. And when the Woody character shows up, you've got DiCaprio and Django. You say, like, mm -hmm. okay, now we're going. Yeah. And, um, I was afraid I was going to feel that way till Lando showed up. So I was actually happy that it started before that. Oh, oh yeah. okay, cool. This yeah. is all good. So then, then you got Lando, which I... That takes a minute to get it to does. him. Yeah, it does. He wasn't in it nearly as much as I would have liked, but that's my fault. That's because I wanted it to be his movie. And when he is in it, he's great. Yeah. He was yeah. awesome. L3 was great. I thought the scene in the cockpit between L3 and Khaleesi, I don't remember the character's name. I know it's... I think it's Kira, I think... But yeah. I thought that was awesome. I love that scene. And that was another thing that I was very pleasantly surprised with is that Kira is, um, God dang it, I can't believe I can't think of her real name. And I hate that I can't think of it because I'm going to say something really mean and something nice. So I wish I could get it right. I hopefully it'll come back to me in a second. But Khaleesi from Game of Thrones. Okay. I despise the Khaleesi and I don't like her acting on that show. I thought she was great in this. Yeah. I really liked her. I'm like, because Amelia Clark, that's her name. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't expecting to like her at all because I just don't like her in anything. But I really liked her. I thought, this is yeah. cool, particularly the second. I mean, the third, the opening stuff is okay, but the later stuff, I mean, I know we're building that character up, and then you've got the little reveal. I, I hope they are anyway. That'd be a lot of fun. If you want to go off and do that story, that, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's one of the, the biggest eye roll scenes that I can think of. It's, luckily, it comes early and get it out of the way. It's but, baby group dancing to the sound to the, the opening credits, right? Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> baby group. And I'm so happy they got that out of the way that quick. <laughs> Apparently, all you have to do to join the Empire is walk up to your kiosk and say, Can I join? They're like, Yeah. And know your family's name. 
because I mean that's just that. your first name <laughs> is apparently that's a solo was tagged on him at the uh, army recruiting station. It, that that was like well, that was my eye roll. Like seriously, that's the best y'all got. Is that, is that this little join the empire kiosk and all? But he's like name <laughs> Han, surname don't have one. Who's your family? I, I don't have any. So Han Solo. He, it was he almost looks like right down the barrel of the camera and gives you a mm. it was pretty bad that was a pretty <laughs> awful scene <laughs> i'm gonna be a major character it's fantastic wait till my spinoff comes out <laughs> so that, <laughs> imperial uh, galactic empire recruiter parts one through episodes 14 through 17. that, that was a major eye roll scene i don't know how in the heck he thought that joining the empire was gonna in any way get him back to her. You flash forward two years and it, he seems to have forgotten all about her. Uh, but that that was, it just the getting through the opening scene or two and you're, you're kinda like, you, he's working for this slug that stays in the ground. He's like, I don't care about any of this crap. Yeah. I don't care about your little pod racer car. All the origin story stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. luckily that, and I really feel deep down, that's one reason why the two directors that were on the movie got fired was, it was probably a whole movie of that. Mm. And you had Ron come in like, nah, yeah. we gotta form this into something. It would not surprise me if the objective from the beginning was that you can't make, again, going back to the point I just made, you can't make it too much like Firefly. Mm -hmm. If you make it too much like Firefly, I'm good. and then you have to, it's yeah. exactly what we've said, about Wonder Woman and the First Avenger. Wonder Woman and Captain America have a common ancestry. Mm -hmm. Who cares how much they look alike? Well, they ripped it off from Captain America. No, they didn't. <laughs> they came out at the same time. Leave it alone, y'all. It's fine. And it worked out great. Yeah. Because people on that movie finally just said to hell with it and made Wonder Woman what it turned out to be. Yeah. And this is cool, too. It's okay, man. It's okay. If it reminds you of certain parts of Alien 4, if it reminds you of Firefly, who cares, man? That's what Firefly was anyway. Another criticism I heard from the movie that I really disagreed with was there was, and I, I think it was uh, on the guy that does the uh, freaking uh, pitch meeting, where uh, one of the little jokes he likes he liked to, to throw in was the joke about Solo was that Beckett, the Woody Harrelson character, was totally unaffected by the death of his girlfriend. I completely disagree with that. I felt like in just the two or three scenes they had together, you really bought in to I, that relationship. I, yeah, I thought they were more believable than Han and Kira. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were, you know, they had that relationship where you kind of felt like, okay, I, 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 I believe this. And, uh, you know, when what happens, happens, you're kind of like, well, it's, it's not that he's not unaffected. It's like, it's the same thing he says the whole time. So you just got to move on, you know. So, I, I dug that. I, I even dug the little John Favreau guy. You know, their little team was a cool team. I like that. Uh, getting that in early. Oh, man, these guys are cool. I want to hang out with these guys. Well, they're all, they're all gone. They're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Before so, the scene's over, they're all the only one left. And then you know, you have the whole uh, when Han met Chewie scene, and uh, that, that's cool enough. And then, but you have their little bonding moment or it he shortened his name to Chewy and you're kind of like that's did we really <laughs> that was that necessary at all it wasn't. we didn't have to have that scene did we i mean come on guys but all that being said i'm i'm just not trying to totally crap on the movie because i loved it I, 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 I liked it a lot one of my favorite things as far as the name shortening Chewy, han solo all that stuff i thought my favorite name gag was that donald glover intentionally calls him han the whole movie even yeah. after he corrects him. That is yeah. so fantastic. <laughs> I love it because that's what Billy D called him by God. Yeah. They were establishing it early. I loved that. I that, thought that was very, there very, were very small. Lines. Uh, Donald Glover, even I could I could hear <laughs> Billy him doing the voice. It was awesome, man. Like, man, this dude is the right casting. Uh, he was perfect, man. And uh, cause, and I think he was one of the castings that when people heard about it, they are kind of like, really, him? Like, yeah, man, it's yeah, good. Well, and uh, I'm far too biased because I love the kid, but 
I can't imagine anybody having a hard time with I mean, who the hell else are you going to get to play? Lando. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. I just, uh, I, I just thought that. And see, it, they, they get uh, to the other little box that they had to check at the end. It's like, we're well, finally going to get to see a castle run. And you're kind of like, really, that's it? But, you know, uh, other than that, I mean, uh, even the uh, Paul Bettany playing the uh, uh, Crimson Dawn was the other guy, but he was Dr Dragon Moss, Drago Moss, Deccan. So, anyway, uh, and the, even that character, I was like, man, this isn't as terrible as everybody is telling me it is. I, I dug it. I, I, like it. I actually thought that that was one of those things where it's just this generic, run of the mill, gangster, tough guy, bad guy. Mm -hmm. But because Paul Bettany's getting the check to play him, it was great. Yeah, it's just it's one of yeah. those good examples of just how good that guy is. Paul Bettany, um, Emily, uh, gosh, <sighs> Emily Watson. Um, there's a, there's a crew of like four or five actors, Stanley Tucci, mm -hmm. that no matter what you give them, it can be absolute dreg material. And by the time it's done, it's like, wow, these are some talented people right mm -hmm. here. Paul, um, uh, I was going to say Paul Thomas Anderson, Philip Seymour Hoffman, early in his career. Now, towards the end, everything he did was priceless, including Along Came Polly, as he's awesome in that. But early in his career, watch Twister. It's this garbage, piece of crap movie, and yeah. he's this annoying little jackass, and he kills it because it's what he's supposed yeah. to be. And then he's in Big Lebowski, which everything in Lebowski is good, but he's just supposed to be this weaselly little sycophant, and he kills that too. He's, yeah. Man, the guy's awesome at everything. I thought one of the coming out party things for him was talented Mr. Ripley, because mm -hmm. that was Matt Damon's dramatic, you know, tour de force and nobody remembers Matt Damon everybody remembers mm -hmm. that guy that he kills and it's like thank yeah. god you killed that guy yeah. <laughs> See, I, mean, I, wanted, I wanted to do that myself I think that's what messed up telling Mr. Ripley is that when he kills the guy you're pulling for him <laughs> yeah. one of the interesting things about uh, Paul Bettany in this role was he was part of uh, the Ron Howard coming in to reshoot and that that role had to be recast Sweet. Uh, originally, that was Omar from The Wire. Yeah. That was, that was playing that. That was that, and, and it makes you wonder: Will we ever see that version of the movie come out? Now, I, I seriously doubt it. But who knows? Uh, the tw the twenty fifth anniversary re release uh, special edition might get to see it, but I I, th I think that it will be uh, on on the level of Star Wars Christmas special type stuff that's never going to see the light of day. I completely agree. Especially when you release it and everyone goes crazy about it, which, by the way, don't believe the myth that it's lost money. It's made money. Has it made a lot, but it's made... Yeah. Everybody keeps saying, well, it lost 30, it lost 50 million. Oh, my God. None of this stuff is going to lose money. It's just, mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way because the problem is... Apparently, people think you're supposed to make your budget back in the opening weekend. Not everything is Black Panther. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But... That was something, and people have, I thought that so much of the backlash was an opportunity to resurrect the long, dead carcass of the horse of Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I'm not going anymore because Last Jedi was so bad, and that's the reason Han Solo's not making money, because it was so bad. If you saw them both, you're contributing to the problem, idiot. Especially if you go more than once. Yeah. Because I love Last <laughs> Jedi, but I only saw it once. Yeah. Now I've seen it twice, because I got it and watched it, and... At, there's, these days, there's very few movies that I can say I've seen in the theater more than once. It's, yeah. it's, it's been years. Uh, since, me too. Since I've been several times to see a movie at the, the at the theater show, just because stuff comes out so quick, you don't have to wait that long. I think the last thing I can remember going to the theater to see more than once was um, No Country for Old Men. I Good. think I think that's the last time I did it. But I'm with you, and also anymore, I'm very spoiled because I like my room, I like being able to control the air conditioner, and I love subtitles, man. I put subtitles on for everything, and I'm okay. I can watch it without them, but I just, you know, in the low-talking scenes of, like, actual acting, I want to peek down and make sure I got it. I like being able to do that. Yeah. So I, that's really my thing, also, especially with how much movie tickets cost now and how cheap Blu-rays and DVDs are, especially DVDs. You can get a DVD for less than the ticket cost you. Yeah. So if I'm gonna go once, I'll go once, but then just save it, mm -hmm. just keep it in back. Especially, with, um, I shouldn't, I keep saying especially, but it, it's pertinent for what we're talking about. 
if you dig the Marvel stuff, that means you've got to pay Disney prices. So that really gets out of control pretty quick. I, 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 I try to buy those all like day one because mm -hmm. it's the only time you can get them for a decent price. And it's like, okay, I'm doing these stupid Blu rays. I got to go on the first day. I got uh, yeah. uh, Last Jedi on the first day. Yeah. And it's still, I still like all the stuff that I liked about it before, I still like. Um, and yeah, that includes the Rose character. Like we talked about, man, I love Rose and Finn. Apparently, I love them more than I'm supposed to because that story was awful, but I like them anyway. I just love mm -hmm. those characters. I hope they get something good in the third one because I really yeah. like both of them. And that's yeah. a sad story that uh, Rose has shut down all of her social media stuff because it's just like, F you people. And uh, that's two for two. It's two for two because, um, oh, for Pete's, I can't think of anybody's real names tonight, but Ray did the same thing. I, don't, and, I think uh, it's a very wise decision if you're going to be. And that, that level of the public eye is like, man, it ain't worth who it. Who needs it? Who, yeah. who needs that much constant rubbish? And the thing that's crazy is that, remember, the same thing happened to Jake Lloyd, Jake Anakin Skywalker Lloyd from episode one before social media was even a thing. So yeah. it's like, what are y'all doing to this guy, man? So I just think, we talk about the Madden curse. Let's about the Star Wars curse. Yeah. Why would anybody want to perform for us as a fan base? Because literally you have two kids that played Anakin Skywalker that have left the business. One guy, Jake Lloyd, can't get his life back for nothing, man. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Hayden Christensen's done. Um, Natalie Portman is about the only person from those prequels that survived. And say what you want, Natalie. Everyone knows how you did it. And it just frustrates me because I am not a Natalie Portman fan. I, it frustrates me to say this, but... I don't like her jumping on the Me Too bandwagon when everybody knows close to us how you got your career back. That's a fact. That is how you did it. It was all the producers that wanted you to shake your little wee-wee on camera. You did it for them. And I mean, it's, that's, I don't know what it's like to be a woman in Hollywood. I know a lot of women have taken that route to get that level of fame, to keep that level of fame. The problem I have is not you doing it. That's your call because it's your life. But to try and be celebrated for, well, I intentionally took roles where I wasn't sexualized, that's just a lie. Yeah. That is just a lie because you started with Closer and then you got your Oscar for going down on Mila Kunis. And again, whatever it takes, man, because... Holy crap, women are asked to do some pretty horrible things in all lines of work, especially acting, but just don't try to make yourself some kind of martyr after the fact. That's what frustrates me about it, because the thing about Me Too and Time's Up is there's a lot of people that really deserve the mic time more than you. That's my opinion on it, man. But between Closer and uh, Black Swan, it's like, man, I, do what you have to do, but then wanting credit for you know, for not doing this thing that you obviously did, that's just that doesn't sit well with me, man. It frustrates the crap out of me. And also, people constantly kill Kira Knightley for her acting in Episode One. It's like, well, they were all unfortunately everybody in Episode One found out that George had green screens everywhere so he could manipulate the faces. That's why Liam Neeson never came back. Why well, never saw Qui Gon again? Because he said "f you" when he found out his image was being digitally manipulated. And that's all yeah. of them. So the acting, including Natalie Portman, the acting in all the early Star Wars stuff, I'm like, I can't hold that against you. I know you're yeah. better than that. Yeah. Anyhow, I didn't mean to get off on that tirade, but it makes me mad every time she shows up. It's like, man, give that microphone back to Ashley or, um, gosh. Uh, Mira. Yeah. Scarlett yeah. Johansson, Asia Argento. Uh, he might want to keep the mic, mic away from Rose McGowan. Cause, yeah, yeah, don't. Sad. Speaking of... Uh, sad situations. Uh, another person on the this dude tried to get on the Me Too, and I I trying to <laughs> start up no no BS, but the whole uh, one of the things that happened since the last time we talked was the Enzo Amore, the the real one, uh, track dropped, and just it's one of those kind of things. It's like pump the brakes on this ticker tape parade you're gonna throw yourself because when you get off on not enough evidence I don't to me that doesn't equate innocence it just didn't happen yeah when, when you've got the girl that goes forward and says that she made up rape accusations against the football players that's a little different than what happened with you and the yeah. present the big you know the big frustration with stuff like that is that <coughs> that girl will forever be um oh exam not example exhibit a yeah for the case of like, well, they all just make it up. Mm -hmm. It's never real. You just want to get fame. You just want to get fame to get paid. Yeah, because college football players are well compensated for their time. So yeah, she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was going to get money from that. But that's what frustrates me. She admitted that she lied about it. So now everybody's lying about it forever. It's just more of that stuff where the 
media is fake if I don't like it, but if it's what I want to hear, then it's the gospel truth, man. People, yeah. people have done that since way before hashtag anything, yeah. but it's just exacerbated and made much, much worse by the media exponentially growing into this thing called social media because now you can find anything to justify any thought you've ever had. You can find anything to contradict it. I feel the case. And whichever one you want to go with is one you're going you're gonna to go with. And it's interesting to me, more times than not, it's the contradiction. It's the thing that, I don't know if Russia or Sweden figured it out first, but I know that Google and Facebook live off of it. And this is something interesting, kind of a different subject. But uh, we've talked about this a little bit, man, where I have heard so many people complaining <coughs> that, well, conservative content is edited on Facebook. They, it's not the same. They, they take conservative and Republican and pro-Trump ideas off of Facebook so you don't see them. That's all I ever see. Yeah. And so my thought is this. I'm not a Trump supporter. I don't click on anything Trump. I don't really talk to very many Trump people, at least not using hashtags. And I'm being fed a consistent stream of pro-Trump fill in the blank. So it stands to reason that all the people that are complaining about not seeing pro-Trump stuff are having the exact same thing done to them. Well, I shouldn't say the exact same. The other side of that coin, yeah. where if you are pro-Trump and you do use the hashtags, your feed is going to be clogged with the uh, with the opposite. That's insane, but it's all I can think about. Is like, because every time I hear people complain about that, I'm like, bro, that's all I ever see. But it makes sense, because if we're on different sides of that, and I'm pursuing this, and the algorithm says, kill them with this, you flip that over, it makes total sense. They're probably right. I'll bet it is being edited for them because it's what they would like to see. So anything like the cantankerous, re not reactionary, adversarial is what I'm looking for, relationship with anything, any article you read is so much better for social media because quality doesn't mean a damn thing. It's quantity. How many, yeah. how many looks, how many likes, how many comments. Yeah. People are way more likely to comment something negative and anyone that's ever read a review on Amazon, anyone that's ever read a review, um, comment section here on YouTube yep. knows that's true. <laughs> so it's like, man, because it used to make me real mad. I'm like, y'all are just lying, man, because all I ever see is pro-Trump stuff. And then it occurred to me, like, you know what? I'll bet they're not lying. I'll bet we're just having different experiences because we're going at it from different angles. And that totally sucks because everybody's right. That was that was one of the things that I, I thought about was talking about another act that came down was the the Roseanne show being canceled. Yeah. And, it, and I, I never understood that the concept of a network not owning a show. I was like, well, it's only a network. You have to own it. It's like, well, production companies own TV shows. And if that's one reason why ABC owns Agents of Shields and they make all the money from it. And mm -hmm. something like, if you don't own the show, you don't make as much. And so when that show was canceled and the acts came down quick and hard, it, <laughs> one of the thoughts that came across the mind was, it makes you wonder, with a show being canceled, it's not, the, the end, it's not the death nail that it once was back when we were kids. So it made me wonder, like, will a Hulu or something like that be like, we're cool with it. Come over here. Come over here and we'll, we'll put you back on. Um, if, if Fox gets a streaming service, she'll have a show again. Hulu's oh, yeah. run by NBC, so she's got no prayer there. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that it drives home something, we talked about this off camera, we'll talk about it here now. One, I have a theory about the Roseanne thing, and I'll throw that out there real quick. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with the tweet, and it's got nothing to do with her pro-Trump stance and all that stuff. None of this has anything to do with her being pro-Trump, by the way, because this is something my brother and I talked about, and it's driving both of us crazy. Everybody acts like Roseanne's politics. Oh, my God. It ran the numbers through the roof because people want the voice of the pro-Trump. Nobody knew that until they watched the first episode, and then everybody melted down. Yeah. But everybody watched the first episode because it was the first episode. Yeah. That it had nothing to do with politics. The reaction to it did, mm -hmm. but I don't think the reaction was totally po political either. Some of it was. Some people were like, oh, she's pro-Trump, I'm done. But yeah. at least you watched the first one and found that out. But that's not where the huge turnoff came from. Let's just exhale and let's admit. The huge drop-off is the fact that, mm, not new anymore. That's yeah. it. Everybody tuned in to what get their little nostalgia fix. And most of the people that turned off for week two were going to be gone anyway. And that <coughs> takes us back to my theory about what really happened there. Because this is where ABC, I thought, dropped the ball. They renewed that thing for like two more seasons after the first 
episode, yeah. and I swear to you, I think it was ABC Brass just suffering from buyer's remorse. And the yeah. first thing that came along, the first opportunity to get rid of her, they were going to get so, rid of her. Yes, do it. I totally agree. It's like I read a tweet that was great, and it was like, Roseanne didn't get fired because she was a racist. She got fired because she wouldn't keep her racism just enough below the surface where ABC can make money off of it. I think there's some truth to that, yeah. but I don't even think it's the backlash. I think it was just like, whew. I think it's the American Broadcasting Company exactly wiping that brow and being like, thank God we cleared that debt. But if it is more of traditional canceling, we talked about it with Samantha B. and um, now apparently uh, Bill Maher. We want to go back to Bill Maher being, because it's one of the things I dislike about Bill Maher actually, is Bill Maher is one of those white people that will say that N word because it's so edgy. So edgy. Oh man, man. edgy. And, and, and I can't stand that. that. That is one of the one of the things that makes me. There are a few things on earth that are just easily accessible to everybody. That just, I mean, white hot furious quicker than that. Yeah. I cannot stand people. Somebody that's a genuine racist using that word in anger bothers me less than some white liberal prick doing it to be edgy. I'm edgy, guys. I kill oh my god. I, yeah. I can't stand it. Casual racism is poison. Anyway, sorry to get sidetracked, but the point we were making was that if it's not about contract, if it's not about regretting giving her that much money and it's just about advertisers, okay, HBO doesn't have advertisers. TBS has their own, they get to make their own decision. These things don't go across the board, but oh my, going to the point you made earlier. If the only money that ABC is making off Roseanne is from advertisers, and advertisers turn off because of her tweet. She's gone. Oh yeah. But I think they would have been gone because of the numbers. They don't. Mm -hmm. They don't care about words. Nobody cares. It's just <coughs> numbers, man. And I, 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 I didn't watch a uh, second of the show, but uh, I watched the one where David came back because I was very interested to see. I, I, didn't, I wasn't sure if they even got that far. They did. They got but to that one. One of the, one of the things that made me interested and wanted to watch it was I heard that it really. Focused more on Darlene and Sarah Gilbert was supposed to be like killing it. That was the thing about on that show. That was the thing about the David episode is that uh, the story for David is a little weird and a little funky, mm -hmm. um, and it was okay. And it's not that the story is too far flung or anything. I totally cut you off. I'm sorry. That Please continue good. that point. I'll finish in a second. That's, 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 that was the only point. Is like I mean I I hate that that show's gone now. Not only because not only for her, but you just, there, there are hundreds of people that are involved in the making of a TV show. Yeah. And from, to one day have it, and because of one person, and the tweet was, well, wasn't even that good. If you're gonna get us all fired, make it a good one. Yeah, at least that was, that was weak sauce. Oh, so you're, oh, I'm gonna draw a parallel between an African American and a monkey. My God, I'm, I'm so original, I'm edgy. Uh, that is so pathetic, man. But, but that, but that, that's that's it. I mean, that's just my my. I'd been hearing good things about it and was looking forward to seeing it. But now it's kind of like, well, now, no motivation to see it. But but it makes you wonder: is there hope for? Uh, why why not kill Roseanne off? But it did Dan. I see. I had the exact same reaction. I saw this. It was a funny little post on Instagram. It was a picture of Lori Metcalf and it was the name Jackie in the Roseanne font and the tagline for the show is she's the reason you watched anyway. <laughs> he sees it now. Yeah. And I thought the exact same thing yeah. is like, you know, you just killed Dan for no reason and brought him back to life for no reason. You could do the same thing. Why not? Why I mean, not? And then everybody that you're something talking Something people want to see. Because I heard the same thing about I was making the same point about that's a lot of people out of work. Mm -hmm. uh, you knew that John Goodman's contract was guaranteed. Nobody's talking about the actors. Nobody's yeah. talking about the actors, man. So it's like, I think that'd be real cool. Keep that mess going, man. It's, yeah. if, why not? But uh, the, the if, David if it's not, there's so And that's what we're talking about. With, with so many services out there. Yeah. Uh, YouTube Red. I, I, there's places for these shows to go now. Yeah, especially since the network doesn't own it. Yeah. The production company has a green... I mean, like HBO, when they buy stuff, they buy it. That's yeah. why Carnival has never seen the light of day and never mm -hmm. will because the guy can't even write books based on that yeah. story. But you're right. When it's not... Hey, man, if they don't own it, do what you want to. And yeah. it, I think it could totally work, man. The um, the point... i got to get back to David because I don't want to mm -hmm. sound like I'm trashing that. It's not that the story is bad. Not at all. It's just that it feel, it really felt like... 
they were up against the time constraints mm-hmm. of him being on two massive, massive TV shows, and you just don't have time. That's all it yeah. felt like. But the main point that I want to get to is that all the scenes, if you watched Big Bang Theory and you saw the two of them interact and it kind of hurts you a little bit because Sarah's character was so awful on that show, it's neat to see them together again, mm-hmm. but they just never did anything with that character. Mm-hmm. Not the case with Roseanne. It was very nice to see the two of them hammer and tong in it again, and it was really cool. It's the only episode I saw, but it was really nice to see the two of them together again because it worked, man. It's yeah. like, oh, that's cool. It was very cool. Cool. But I completely agree. Just kill Roseanne. Why not? Yeah, just, you know, from what I understand, what I've heard reviews was she wasn't as much of a focal point as you think somebody the show's named the after show's was named after. was this season yeah. so I mean you've pretty much kind of done that it's no problem uh, so just you know go and do it and yeah. uh, take some more no, I agree <laughs> man the, uh, that was another funny tweet that I saw she was took like, her man, pills and she didn't wake up the guy from <laughs> the guy down the street from me you know that screams at his Fox News programming all day must take a hell of a lot of Andy <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny <laughs> I also like them writing her back. Now I do. Oh, th- I thought they, that, they, that was pretty, pretty I, sweet. I thought the overall take on that was quite funny. Like, yeah. really, Big Pharma, you're going to try to be the good guy here. But at the same time, yeah. I loved it. I thought them yeah. defending themselves was quite funny. <laughs> it's like that's cool, man. That's, that's, that's never been a list of side effects. There are side effects, <laughs> but you know what? One isn't <laughs> racism. It's you know it's it's just and some of the. Some of the weakest stuff is always in those half-ass apologies. Like, man, just come out and say, like, man, I'm I'm sorry. I jacked just it. Don't 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 blame a medication or something. Oh, I hate that stuff too, man. The bull crap that you you know just uh is, I, you know I I thought this I thought this would land better and it didn't you know but that's the type of thing that you should know like you can't you just don't say stuff like that. It's, first of all, it's not even funny. It's not funny. And you know just uh, have, having that many people be affected by you saying doing something that stupid. I mean, it just, I think it, it's just really sucks. I agree. I'm, I'm also tired of like cheap and weak political stuff. Mm -hmm. Like a, really the Obama administration. You're why? You're still, you're still going on about that. Let me tell you something. What Barack and Eric Holder are up to right now, you won't see it for eight more years. But you will weep openly in the street when you find out what's going on. And I'm thrilled about it myself. I don't mean to sound nefarious or like it's under the table. I love what they're doing. But you'll see. And you think you didn't like him before. But the thing that drives me the most crazy about all that just weak stuff is like, and it's the same, we talked about it with, um, it reminds me of the Kathy Griffin thing. And hers wasn't an apology. It was just that they weak, got me. that weak need I'm the victim, feel bad for me, and then you go right back to, let's talk about Donald Trump and F Donald Trump, and that was, you know, on De Niro too, that was really weak, mainly oh, because Lord. curse words and Donald Trump's name, really, that's enough? I mean, of all the things you could actually talk about that that guy is doing that you don't like, really, you're just going to go out and say, F Trump, yeah, come on, it's, man, it's, come on. It's, 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 it makes you look just as bad to me. It makes you look silly, man. Yeah. And that's, I think you've, uh, particularly not being a Donald Trump fan, boy, howdy, do I think that the <coughs> antis have the ammunition. So why are you going to waste your time with just being this freaking sophomoric, ridiculous, yeah, man, F that guy, boo. Whether it was, you know, uh, Bill O'Reilly or somebody else on the other side or whoever it was, I mean, and, uh, Actors taking moments like that to do, make this political stuff. It just makes you look like a blowhard that's part of the problem. Yep. You're not part of the solution, but you're taking this moment to make this political message, which is essentially saying nothing. So, I mean, I just. Yeah, that's what frustrates me, too. If you want to do it, go full on Brando, get, man. Get, get, let, get, let, get. Them, let them know why you ain't there. Yeah. Yeah, it's like seriously. If you're going to do it, do it. And also, I mean, dude, like. I know that award shows have always been platforms <coughs> to discuss my political being, but going back to what we we're talking about, with Me Too and Time's Up, they do it right. I mean, by God, when they get the mic, they tell you what they think, and that includes Natalie Portman, who I killed for it earlier. But by God, at least you're taking your shot. Yeah. So you're, you're swinging. That's cool, but you just want to F this guy? Come on, man. That was just That was really weak. <laughs> Show that nobody's watching it. Anyway. Yeah, for real, no kidding, man. All seven people that watch the Tonys were like, "Did you hear Robert De Niro? Of course I didn't. He said it at the Tonys." Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I didn't. Nobody else did either. 
Nine. <laughs> so Solo. Nine. Oh, oh. Oh. You're the boy. Big boy. If <laughs> 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 Ricky Gervais had played that part, it would have been great. Oh. <laughs> Ricky, Ger- Ricky, oh, man. If Ricky Gervais yeah. is the um, Imperial, you know, oh, shoot, uh, recruiter, but he's dressed yeah. up like the genie, yeah. that'd be the best thing ever. If he's wearing his full eye genie costume, that'd have been the greatest thing ever, man. Golly, now I want to see. When they go back to the um, Michael K. That. When they go to see the Mike, when they bring out the Michael K. Williams cut, I yep. want Ricky Gervais's genie to be in there too. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Man. Man, you know, I'll go, I'll kind of jet like that. It's gone on since we last talked. Uh, we I lost. Yeah. Um, some people, uh, I, I didn't realize that uh, Kate Spade was going to be as big a, a deal that she was. Uh, and then uh, Anthony Bourdain, just a few days after that, it was, yeah, you know. Like two days. And, it's, think, and that's not important. It's just, it, it sucks. Like you're saying, they're so close together and they both went out the same way for, I don't know if it's the same reason or not. You can't ask anybody after the fact. But yeah, I mean, as far as what, maybe not why, but what, same mm-hmm. thing. It's like. And I just the, the the vibes I get. I mean, you you hear stories that come out that you know try to make people think different as far as the Kate Fade Spade stuff goes. Because there's some type of note that got left that people led her to believe it was something to do with a relationship. I, I don't I don't read stories like that. I don't get into it. I don't care. And the you know Andrew Bourdain thing. I mean, I just really. Get the, I, I got Robin Williams vibes from it. Yeah, it's, I, I just really get this idea of. I, I try to put myself. What would make me get to that point? What would make me want to do that? And I think going, having having a hell of a run, and getting a terrible diagnosis, and not having any kids, uh, young. To look after, I, what I think would be enough to make me like, you know what? I, I, I think I'm going to take care of this myself. And, I, and, that, and that's, I, I can't prove that. I can't, I don't, you know, want to speculate to anybody that might know him or his family that could somehow see this. I don't think that would happen. But it's not me trying to start rumors. I just really think, what, what would put me in that position? What would make me want to go do something like that? And I think going to, Getting a bad news from a doctor would be enough to be like, you know what? Hell of a run, brother. So he's yeah, swirling in the heavens. It's and- very true. Um, that show, or tweets, God, I spent too much time on Twitter, but this was very good. I love this one. I, I'm sorry to not give credit to who said it. It's making its way back around now as not a meme, but just a post with the words on it. So the person that wrote this, she's way more famous than it, she's famous enough to where I don't have to put her name out there, but I wish I could give credit. I'll put it in the comments afterwards. I'll look it up and I'll, I'll comment it later. But uh, she had said that Anthony Bourdain had one of the only shows in the world that expressly attempted to show Americans that other people aren't scary. And I'm like, God dang, that's such yeah. an awesome point. And I love that. I think that's really, really cool. And then somebody made the point that Rick Steves does the same thing. And I agree and I love Rick Steves, but I don't really like that grandstanding thing of like, well, you're wrong. And Anthony Bourdain wasn't the only one, but this is about him though. It's, it, it, that, it just feels very, all lives matter. It's like, yes, all lives do matter. We're talking about black ones right now. I, that, that always drove me insane. It's like, yes, all lives matter. We're talking about specific ones now. Why does that bother you? I mean, it, I think I know why it bothers you, but anyhow, that, but then it's- I think uh, the Rick, Rick Steves does awesome, service. Anthony Bourdain did it for a, a different group of people. Oh, a lot, yeah, a lot more people with CNN than public television, man. Yeah. It was cool. I, I, I love that show. I was watching, actually, I filmed, I, I really know, filmed. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember any quotes to point out or give him credit, but I know with the CNN Connection, uh, Anderson Cooper had a really good uh, tribute to him. Yeah. This, you could tell this was more it's than just a colleague, this is a friend. That was my dude, man, yeah. And, that's uh, awesome. So that that's just one of those that, you know, uh, it's, it's really, and, and uh, it's a super cool thing to go, and you don't have to go back very far uh, to find it out, uh, but it, it got re-released with no uh, intro, 
and the outro afterwards. He did an interview with Mark Maron a few years ago that he just re-released, and you could tell. I mean, uh, I, I like to think I have a really good bullshit meter, and uh, Fred Rogers, to Anthony Bourdain yeah. of the world, are those type of people that I, if if they were if they were phony, then it would have been found out. It's by it's now. it's silly for me because I'm the same way, particularly Mr. Rogers, Bourdain as well. But my thing with those people. Especially Fred. If Fred was a BSer, he'd have been president a long time ago. Oh, yeah. He'd have been a hell of a lot more wealthy than he was. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, that myth of work hard and you'll be rich in America, it's a myth. It's a lie. Everyone knows it's a lie. It's an effing lie. Yeah. So Fred didn't want that mess. Mm -hmm. If he wanted it, he could have had it, but he, he didn't. And that's what makes him so cool, man. Heck yeah. And Bourdain, I'm with you, just seemed very, very... Legit, very real. Something about food shows, something about food travel shows, because Andrew Zimmern is the guy that does the bizarre food show. Yeah. That guy seems just super cool, man. Now, I like yeah. Bourdain better because he eats more things than I would like to try. <laughs> yeah. But I like both those shows because it's like, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not into the, the, the circus food. I'm like, yeah. no, you can have that. Yeah, it's cool. The cool thing about bizarre foods is the places he goes to get it. Yeah. But I like it better when they balance it out. And it's mm -hmm. like, this is normal stuff, and this is good stuff, and this is street fair, and this is the crazy stuff. I'm going to go eat my trash food. <laughs> yeah, seriously, because it's like, that was that one thing. I think it was in Vietnam where they have, um, I think it's noodles that literally like tofu soaked in trash juice and he yeah. just he's like I can't do it he yeah. tries it like, it was three different times he tried it and he's like I, I just can't do it guys no. but it's like the difference between something like that and like man versus food but just thank god they turned it into a challenge show and didn't ask that guy to keep doing it because yeah. he would have died the yeah, stuff they asked him to eat died. is just insane he eventually got out of all together Oh, uh, yeah, is that yeah. right? Well, there's another guy doing the show now. <laughs> there's another uh, idiot doing the show, but yeah, the original guy's like, oh. You, you can just see Adam when that show started. There's a, yeah, a man. balloon and that, that man. Why? And I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would sign up, too, but I think I would have that same <laughs> kind of reaction, like, you know, three cities in, like, please stop. <laughs> please let me stop. <laughs> yeah, man, if you could, what if you could just host the show? And find some idiot local that wants to be on TV to do it. That way, it saves you the calories. You get the the you know gross factor of some other moron killing themselves. But you know, like man, look at that idiot. You know, it's like you don't have to do it yourself. That guy's so stupid. I made a lot of money hosting this show. Thank you, moron. I'm 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 down with a lot of. I'm not down with the competition eating stuff. But, yeah. But I, 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 I love that show. But it seemed like. There for a while, every single competition was uh, uh, spice related yeah. and hot heat related. I'm like, <coughs> I'm not down with that. I can't do that. Uh, won't do that. I'm not wasting my time when stuff doesn't taste mm -mm. good. And I love spice. I spiced the crap out of my I made a salad last night. It was just fantastic. And it was probably more curry and red pepper than it was spinach. But it was good because yeah. I like that because I know what to do. But yeah, just the... Hot for the sake of hot, I'm like, mm, keep that mess, man. No. I ain't into that. No. I did, I've got, I'm very lucky. My, my neighbors are from Nepal, and they are always bringing food home. And they yeah, are very generous, yeah, very, very generous. They're always hooking me up, man. And it was, um, oh, man, uh, tikka paneer, which was great, because I love that. The tikka sauce is like the red tomato-based one. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's basically like... Um, it's India, Nepal, and I can't remember where else eats basically. But it's kind of like their version of marinara sauce. Doesn't taste okay. like that, but it's just tomato yeah. based, and it's very, very good. Picante chow chow. Yeah, kind of like that, but yeah. it's just it's real good, and I love it. And then um, had these like I, I looked up the name and I forgot it was I haven't gotten it before, man. But it's just this little like street food fried like flash fried things, and one of them was it tasted like potatoes. I should have cut it open and looked. It was really good. And another one, my guy told me he was like. <laughs> Sam's awesome. He's like, do you like spicy stuff? I was like, I'm just thinking. I'm like, this this dude's from Not Nepal. Enough. This dude's from <laughs> Nepal, man. It's like I think spice yeah. is probably very different to them than it is us. I'm like, I'll give it a try, no problem. And I bit into it, and it tasted really, really good. And then I just coughed for like 45 minutes. It was <laughs> it was very, very good. But it was just like you gotta you gotta be a native to get down with that, man. <laughs> it was it was nuts, man. But they're awesome. Thank you. Uh, uh, Shaman Lakshmi, thanks guys. They're very nice to me. Rock and roll. That's done. I thought I'd finish that four hours ago. <laughs>
because I'm stupid. What do you think? That's, but I guess that's, that's one of the, the next things I'm looking forward to is talking about the, the Fred Rogers movie. Is, mm. It's one of those things that's kind of like, it's in town, but of course it's only playing at one theater oh, in Atlanta. Mid Midtown Art? It's, it's at the Terra 4. Ah, okay. And it's got to be one of the two. Uh, I'll, I'll be able to go next weekend, but of course it doesn't give you, at a, at a small theater like that, they don't give you that far in advance yeah. of if it's going to be there or not. So it's kind of like, crap, I might just, might be one of those just to wait. I, I think I'm gonna put my money. Streaming. I think I'm gonna put my money into getting a copy of that because I like Fred enough to buy it. And my yeah. brother and I both like documentary. My brother especially is a mm -hmm. documentary fanatic. He, my yeah. brother watched documentaries over fiction. He just yeah. it's like reading nonfiction. Some people are into that. So I, I can just get a copy of it. It'll be all good, man. Uh, but that that does uh, remind me of of instead of going out to the movie show. One of the things I've been watching a lot of is uh, the Netflix stand-up comedy specials yeah, and I just one of those kicks I got on I get, I get on the kicks like that so if you They're, watched like 600 of them or in other words 4% of them <laughs> yeah but there, there's a lot of bad out there yeah I, I, got, I gotta be up front with that but uh, talking about cool documentaries I'll, I'll, I don't know if you, I don't know if it's technically a documentary but the the Tig Notaro one was is really good I saw that and I really enjoyed it, but uh, the one that I think is the coolest out there right now is it's another person that was on the Mark Maron podcast not long ago is uh, Neil Brennan uh, has one, and especially uh, not long far removed from Mental Health Month, it's one of those that's worth checking out. Uh, it's called Three Mics, and the concept of the show is there's three mics set up. Uh, there's the the mic set up for straight up one liner jokes the mic in the middle is for real talk and the one on the far side for uh, just standard stand up and it's uh, not not like any other special I've ever seen and really cool and more of a cool ass uh, spoken word show than a stand up show I don't know if he would like me describing it that way, but that's that's what I walked away from it with. If you, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think they're exclusive. I think you can enjoy both and uh, them be cool. Uh, stand up, spoken word, one and the same as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's plenty of good on each side. Uh, if you don't know who Neil Brennan is, he was Dave Chappelle's writing partner, uh, collaborator, from going back to freaking uh, half baked and up into the Chappelle show, and just some of the stuff he gets into in the real talk section of the show is really kind of like whoa uh, kind of stuff, and to be able to to do that and go back and forth with other jokes and stand up stuff is really interesting and I think something that will probably uh, be copied and at least attempted uh, you know I guess it's just his way of doing a one-man show which other people have done but then not 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 in this not this well yeah I like the idea of being able to switch off without grabbing the old acoustic guitar because yeah. god almighty did I get sick of that I got so tired of everybody yeah. having to take a guitar on stage <laughs> and being like I'm gonna talk politics I'm gonna talk about chicks now I'm gonna be funny and sing a song it's like I'm with you I love the idea of changing gears mid-show especially but um I don't. I have nothing to back this up except that she's my favorite, so I'm gonna give her credit. But I think that um, it's like, like you're talking about. I like the angle that people are taking instead of just excuse me. Hey, Netflix wants you to do a comedy special, so just set a camera up and tell jokes. I like that people are trying new and different things. We talked earlier about the Chelsea Peretti one, which isn't great. It's not her fault. It's just it's okay. But the idea is there are several like cinematic style cutaways where she's like different people in the audience, then it'll go down this path, and it's kind of like the um, the commercials on SNL. Then it goes back to the show. It's very interesting. But the first thing I remember ever seeing like that was Maria Bamford's special, 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 mm -hmm. where it's literally her performing in the 
living room of her old house and the entire audience is her parents. That's it. Okay. It is the two of them and they sit there and she tells them jokes and it's it's insane. It's such a cool, insane. different kind of thing. So I'm, I'm with you. I love the idea that the idea of doing something different took. Yeah. And I love that manifestation of it. That is just awesome. Especially you grab the microphone and go back and forth. A lot of people do that. But if you literally assign different areas of the stage for this is this, this is that's really cool. Yeah. I think that's super that's super interesting sounding. So so that's what's up. Yeah, man. And Enzo can't rap. Yeah. <laughs> that's the long short of it. Um, the, uh, on that subject. That's what we'll leave you with. Yeah, on that subject, I'm wearing my champions t shirt today. I'm very proud of the guys. Uh, you've got, let's speak, see. Speak, speak, they want some good wrestling. Yeah, you've news. got the IWGP tag champs. Yeah. You've got the IWGP world champ. And then you've got the NXT North American champ. So good for you guys, man. Oh, golden. It's, oh, my God. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. I'm happy for those guys. And uh, can't wait to see what Naito gets up to next because yeah. that's my man. Heck yeah, yes. Good stuff. Oh, also, good point for United on Saturday. I think it was Saturday. I went to New York City and got a point, which nobody ever does. Should have got all three, but we were just back foot the whole game. Mm -hmm. My God, that second half, we had no possession whatsoever. And Guzan set a team record for saves, but they wound up squeaking one. Thank goodness they didn't get two, so we at least got out of there with a point. And as far as the standings in the <coughs> excuse me, supporters' shield are concerned, which – this is the thing. If you're an MLS fan and you're watching this, say it with me now. At this juncture of the season, that is the ultimate goal. That is the ultimate, ultimate goal because the Supporters' Shield means you had the best record, most of the best point total anyway, of anybody in the entire league. It's an automatic stamping to the Champions League next year. That's it. Who cares about where you are in the East right now? That only matters when you get to the playoff, man. If you win the Supporters' Shield, you're already in the playoff. So let's yeah. just stay focused on how cool it is that Atlanta, Atlanta is number one at something. Actually, Atlanta's number one in two things because the baseball team just keeps still on a winning, keeps don't on, they? Keeps on rolling. But it is awesome. They are so much fun, man. People still keep trying to talk about how, well, you know, they're saying the Nationals going to come back. I don't see that. I have, we have lived. I'm not in, claiming we're going to the World Series, but I don't see the Nationals coming all back. All anybody ever talks about is D.C., 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 and I'm okay with that as long as the name – and I love – Bryce Harper's a great player. Yeah. But the guy for the Nationals is 31. Max Scherzer is from a different planet. That guy yeah, yeah. is incredible, man. So if we're talking about Max Scherzer, I'm cool with it. If it's anybody else, like, mm, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's something real quick, and I promise. I know we're running long, but – John Smoltz was on the MLB Network, and they were discussing ways to improve baseball. Because everybody's got an idea how to improve baseball. And it's always, well, we need a pitch clock, and they need to stop, you know, going out into the mound visits. And it's just, it takes too long. Nobody that likes baseball thinks it takes too long. Nobody. And it was, well, I mean, God, games are three and a half and four hours. You just described every game the NFL played last year. Yeah. The NFL's dying. Accept it. Accept yeah. it. No one cares. Younger people don't like it, and you've killed it with advertisements. Baseball, on the other hand, is doing okay because baseball's got that magic thing that you need in sports these days. Ask the NBA if this matters, international interest. But that's not what I was, was, was going to say. Whenever you ask people how do you fix baseball, they've all got ideas and it's all about time saving. Of course, leave it to John Smoltz, genius, fantastic golfer, who, by the way, in the same week that John Elway washed out in his attempt to get a PGA Seniors Tour card, John Smoltz got his. Good job, Johnny. Smoltz, of course, breaks it down and is actually coming up with ideas that are extraordinary because none of them are about a pitch clock, none of them are about timing because he understands if you really want to get people interested, cater to the audience you already have. He's right. He's totally right because if you're not growing, you're dying. That's a very antiquated attitude. Please, you need that. To, that attitude does not work in a country that subsidizes corporations. You just you can't talk about the free market. You can't talk about, well, if you're not good enough to stay in business, you just go under. Okay, then explain General Motors, explain Ford, explain auto industry bailouts, explain the Wall Street bailout. doesn't work that way. We give socialism to companies and not people. That's what we do here, that being the case. It's not about growing or dying. It's about basically taking care of the people that got you there. Smoltz's attitude was ingenious because his point was, if you cut it to 154 games, which everybody, 158 games, which everybody says they need to do, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But his point is if you go to 158 games and then schedule double headers, 
it's fewer ga- fewer days on the calendar, and he's right. right. And it's like, oh, that makes sense. That's yeah. good. And his point is, 158 divides right in half. And the point being that your first 74 games of the season are a season. If you are in first place at the All-Star break, you're going to the playoffs. Now, imagine what Atlanta would be doing right now if that was in place. We would be losing our minds. Yep. And you can't do that because Julio Jones isn't at mandatory practices. And that's what all of us have to talk about now. We have the best soccer team in MLS. We have the best base- well, we have the best baseball team in the National League East. But all we want to talk about is Julio Jones. And this is my point about – I know I'm getting way afield. But that's my point about don't talk about a free market. Don't talk about non-competition. The sports media is obsessed with the NFL. So that's all you can talk about. That's all anybody can talk about. And it's very frustrating. Because Atlanta being in first place in the NL East is fascinating. They should not be doing it. And Freddie Freeman should be everybody's forerunner for National League MVP. And no one talks about it. Nobody says nothing. Like, man, that's cool. But I love that idea that if you make the season two seasons, if you're in first place the All-Star break, you're in. If you do it again and you're in first place in both, you get a bye in the first round. And then he also did something that we've talked about forever, and it's that whoever is the top team in the league I might have the numbers on this wrong, but I'm pretty sure that he agreed with me on this. Whoever the top team is plays the wild card team in a best of five. That's five games on the road. If you're a wild card team, if you can win three out of five in the best building in baseball, you deserve to go to the next round. And if you don't, but what you don't deserve is home games. Yeah. Don't be giving me that three-two split, man. Yeah. The best record in baseball gets you one extra home game against, by the nature of the wild card, the hottest team in the league. Get out of here. That's yeah. trash. Yeah. I loved his idea, particularly because it helps Atlanta right now. Mm-hmm. But when he made that proclamation, that wasn't the case. Yeah. It's just a great idea because I'm like, man, it literally gives you – they've built in a way to have one-game playoffs every year. <laughs> That's exciting. That's cool. What John Smoltz has done is he has given you not one but two pennant races, two of them, man. Come on. That is the coolest thing anybody has had to say about baseball in ten years, man. So stick your play clock or – you know, mound visits, all that junk. <laughs> None of that stuff matters because, as we've said many times before, if you are not interested in cutting ad revenue, you're not interested in cutting time. And I know it's unrealistic. It's, no one's going to give back Budweiser money. No one's going to say, we're running fewer commercials because the game is too long. My point is not that you should. It's that you should or you should shut up. Because mm-hmm. if you really complain, if you really, if the length of the game really bothers you, it's the easiest fix in the whole wide world. Yeah. Put sponsorships all over the jersey and run less commercials. But if you're not willing to do that, please be quiet. Yeah. Be quiet and give the mics to people like Smoltz because that was great. Man, that's what's up. Heck yeah, man. Take it easy, y'all.